So guys, welcome back to the Bear Podcast Show. This is week number eight, and you are live with Sean Scullion. The handsome stranger. And you have Aiden of Face for Radio over in the corner, and you have me, Owen, aka the Burr, and we are with Ashley. Hello. How Pleasure are you to doing? Have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um look, we'll just jump right in, Ashley. Um, Why not? Tell us a wee bit about Ashley. Well, my name is Ashling, as you've said. <laughs> I am from Kildreas near Cookstown in County Tyrone. I have a son, Killian. He will soon be 11. And um, I work as a Heal Your Life teacher and workshop leader. I started my own business five and a half years ago. And um, really, the impetus to start that business came from my own personal journey, where I suffered with anxiety for many years, uh, depression, um, many times in my life didn't want to be here had a really unhealthy relationship with myself I absolutely despised myself and everything about myself and um, my inner world um, was not was not good but of course people from the outside looking in would have seen probably a pretty picture perfect life but that wasn't what my inner reality was like and I had a breakdown in 2008 where I really thought I had lost my sanity and I really couldn't see how I could make it back to being a normal functioning person who would go to work and go and do groceries and you know meet people out and about I I felt that I had lost that ability and um, that is when my journey of self-discovery and self-healing and self-love began and that was in 2008 and I was introduced to Louise Hay's book You Can Heal Your Life and um, I really didn't see how a book was going to help me. To be honest, I thought I was too far gone, but I didn't really have any other options. Um, well, I didn't feel drawn to counselling and I didn't feel drawn to going on medication. And I knew that I couldn't keep doing what I had been doing. So somebody recommended this book and that book ended up being an absolute lifeline for me. Um, and then when I started working on myself using Louise Hayes theories and started growing in awareness of myself and my own patterns within myself, within my way of thinking and um, within my way of responding to life and in the actual experiences that I had been attracting to me, then I became empowered um, to change. And I noticed, um, firstly, a lot of physical healing in my body of chronic long term conditions that I had. Um, and I started becoming more tolerant of myself, more accepting, more patient, more gentle. And um, really, my inner world started to blossom. And I had worked in my family's business for 18 years, and I expected to work there all of my working days. I was so, so passionate and so committed about what I did. But then really, my passion for this inner work and how transformative it had been for me took over. And it was really bursting to get out of me, if that makes sense. And there was no outlet for all of these concepts and practices that had been life changing for me, there was no outlet for any of this in what I did every day or in my life. So I um, handed in my notice to do the Heal Your Life teacher training when I couldn't get the time off work to do the training. And really, that was the first decision that I made that wasn't based on fear my whole life it was the first time I really listened to and followed my intuition and it didn't make any sense I didn't have a business plan I didn't have a client base I didn't have savings you know it it, it didn't make any sense and I was married at the time and it took both of our incomes to pay our mortgage pay our bills and um, whenever I left my family's business actually on that same weekend my husband, who I had been with for 22 years, actually left on the same weekend. And that was just over five years ago. So really, all of the security that I had relied upon for 18 and 22 years all fell away just like that. Yeah. So then, so for people that don't know, um, healing your life, life with Ashleen, what, what does it entail? Or, you, you know, if I, if I was coming to you, say that for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, life's knocked me back a few places or whatever else. What type of help would you be giving to me for people who don't know? Mm -hmm. 
I suppose I always find my work hard to describe. I don't find it difficult to do, but I find it difficult to describe because I suppose it is very intuitive. So really, I make a connection with the person in front of me. So obviously, then each session is unique because each person and their experiences and the things that they're struggling with are unique to them. So really, I make a, a connection with them and I get a strong sense of what it is like to be that person if that makes sense so there's just that deep connection and from that place I help a person to see themselves and their life and their relationships with people and their past in in an enlightened way I suppose it's a bit like say if you were to climb a mountain you would have a better vantage point you would be able to see things at the top of that mountain that you physically could not see at the bottom of the mountain so even though nothing in that person's life has changed in the duration of the session they come out and they feel like a different person because they're seeing everything in a different way it's like they're seeing everything through a different lens or a different filter which changes their experience through different techniques through um i suppose maybe using some of my own experiences and showing them maybe similar experiences that i've had and how i've overcome them and then that that means that they can be objective because you're taking them outside of their own world and you're then they're able to see you're able to trace that journey when it's of somebody else so they can connect with that person yet it's somebody else so they're able to see that clearly so then they can sort of step into that themselves but but yes through talking through some um energy work through some different practices so i suppose i don't want anybody to leave me um enlightened um with with new ways of thinking only because sometimes then it's hard to know what to do with everything you've you've uncovered in that session. How do you integrate all of these theories, which might be amazing, but how do you actually integrate those into your everyday life? There can be a big gap there between, say, a book that you read, and then what do you do with that? Then it falls away and you just revert back to your normal patterns. So I like to give people patterns to, or sorry, um, practices to empower them after their session with me. So um, simple practices that they can integrate into their life easily, that don't cost them any money, um, that they can do in a matter of a couple of minutes here and there through their day. And um, these practices are really life-changing and then that changes the person's relationship with themselves. And Yeah, well, look, we, we chatted just before we come on there and I said to you that I had 1am weeks yep. and that I felt this tightness in my chest mm-hmm. and couldn't get it shifted. And I knew there was things that I was being irrational about. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't, like, I couldn't click out of it. I was like, I know this is all me, but everything's, anno- like, everything is going, everything's annoying me. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't matter if I got a tax on you, looking to know what time we were doing this show. Yeah. And, and I was blaming, why is he not taxing me back? He knows I have children to sort out and this, that and other. So, like, the likes of me coming in and going, I've, I've been feeling this tightness in my chest mm-hmm. for months. Mm-hmm. There's obviously something going on deeper you know Mm -hmm. what what is that something that you would be helping people with absolutely you know it it might sound a strange thing to say but we're not taught how to breathe and that i know that sounds like a strange thing to say but it's true you're totally right so if we haven't been taught how to breathe and we're not consciously breathing we're breathing unconsciously which means we're not breathing properly it's happening involuntarily all by itself but i believe that our relationship with our breath is symbolic of our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with everything and everybody in life. I mean, um, for years, I couldn't get a deep breath. I felt like there was a weight on my chest that was obstructing me. It felt like an actual physical weight, but of course it wasn't. Um, And then whenever I started practicing abdominal breathing, I found it really, really difficult. In fact, at the start, I thought, I can't do this. Um, But with actually very little practice, I was able to to change the way that I breathe completely and I then was breathing from my tummy rather than breathing from my chest and it allowed me to be able to get a much deeper breath and now my breath is something that I am not every second every minute of every day but it's something that I am quite conscious of now so if I ever feel overwhelmed um, or worried or emotional that I will go to my breath and I will draw a really deep breath all the way down into my stomach and after a couple of deep breaths I feel more connected to myself more in tune with myself more balanced more grounded like well a, I need to call out to you and get this <laughs> <to> keep going <laughs> well, it's, it's like a grounding it's, it really it's is bringing you back to the you're conscious you're 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 here and now but mm-hmm. like I was saying to Sean 
the, the term uptight come from that actual, you know, when people are anxious or anxiety is a, it's a clear sign when you're getting anxious and mm-hmm. people be a bit worried about using the term anxiety or uh, mm-hmm. being anxious. Like, people get anxious in everyday life and it's when, it, when it's a prolonged period of that, mm-hmm. you will start to feel like that. But mm-hmm. I, I want, before we go in more into the techniques and the thing, I want to bring it back a wee bit actually to... Mm-hmm. to, to more, I suppose, maybe the darker side before mm-hmm. the, the enlightenment, <laughs> actually, that we have here that's happening <laughs> people now, so that people can more connect with it's not always been this way, and that, that people that are in a place now that they can't even think the way we're, we're discussing and having a love of yourself, they can't yes. even fathom that. That's not mm-hmm. that's not on the horizon at the minute. I understand. For people that's in a place where they're like, uh, that, that that's not in their near their peripheral or anything, mm-hmm. so. You were saying there, obviously, then you decided it must have been hard because you had to tell your family as well as your boss that it must have been a hard <laughs> scenario to get that. You, it took some conviction, but you, you, to, did you have did you have the breakdown before you left work or, or after you left work? Yes, it was before. Um, it was nine years prior to me leaving there. Right. So you were off and you were... When, when you started with Louise Hayes... Did 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 you start thinking back towards that time and and analyzing that, or was it in? What did you find Louise Hayes in that, in through that period, and that's what helped you through? Yeah, just at the time of the breakdown, that's when she entered my life. That's right. So that gave me so much more awareness about myself and my patterns and and life, and I learned about the law of attraction, and I learned about the power of self love and the power the power of our thoughts and all of those things. So it really opened up a whole new world to me. For some of the people that's watching this and they wouldn't be aware, Louise Hayes is a, a top selling author, and the mm-hmm. book uh, the book title is "You Can Heal Your Life." You can heal your life. It, mm-hmm. it, it was like a a, a massive, massive Huge. in America. Yeah, she she she's American. Isn't she? That's right. She passed yeah. away a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so, and and I don't. Obviously, I'm praying. So I, I will. I'll. I'll. We we'll go into this. So then, what you are, had a breakdown. Things have built up, and you 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 went. You're going through that time, and this connected with you. Mm-hmm. So that instantly, you've obviously felt, and there's obviously an instant connection when you're reading that. You, mm-hmm. you must have seen yourself in, in some of what they were talking about. Yes, and it became very clear to you, and mm-hmm. then it allowed you to sit back strip it back and evaluate for some people that might not but different parts of what you're saying and what you do is identifying that the, the similar patterns that people have whether it's anxiety or it's depression or 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 you know whatever it is that, that people but what i was saying is for people there that 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 happened to you Mm-hmm. And then what, what what way did you go? Did somebody then say, look, I think you should read this? And then you start implementing them practices. Did you implement them straight away? Did they help straight away? Did you see anyone? Or Well, it's, it's funny. Even though I was sort of wide open at that time, if you like, I had no choice but to be. I had, it's a bit like if you were driving a car and there was a red light on, on the dash for maybe weeks or months or maybe years, right? And you knew that the car wasn't working perfectly, but you didn't want to have to take it to the garage because you knew it was going to cost you money to have it fixed and you knew it was going to be an inconvenience because you would have no car for a while so you just kept letting the car go along and say if the car broke down in the middle of a motorway or something like then you're going to take the help you're going to say please come and tow me away (laughs) this is an emergency so even though I was wide open at that time I still had quite a bit of resistance um, and to a lot of the concepts in the book it sounded very American, no disrespect to anybody who's American, but it just sounded very unfamiliar, very foreign sort of language and very foreign concepts to me. Um, And even the wording, everything like that, it sort of obstructed me in in a way from from getting on board with these theories. So there were a lot of things that I wasn't open to and didn't agree with, yet there was some wee spark that stood out to me as truth like I'd never heard before. So what she was saying was totally different to what I'd learned, say, through my religion and my my upbringing. So that's why there was that bit of resistance. But um, enough of what she said did make sense that then the parts that didn't make sense, I trusted then that they weren't necessarily wrong. It's just that my level of awareness wasn't there yet. So I just, any of the concepts that I didn't understand or agree with, I just sort of parked those. And I just kept going with the parts that 
did resonate with me. And then those concepts were opening my mind up. And then over time, these other concepts that were beyond me initially, then I suppose had more fertile soil within me, if you like, to become implanted. So, so I did come around to to all of it in, over time, but it did take time. Did the, so, and you said there that your your marriage it broke up. Did that happen after, after? So that was obviously a test. Then again, that was huge. I mean. I had actually consciously thought several times in my life that the one thing that I knew that I couldn't cope with, I I suppose I think everybody probably has certain things that they believe they couldn't cope with. So for me, that was my thing. I always thought if my marriage ended or if my husband left, you know, I know that I couldn't deal with that. So I am so lucky that I know that isn't ever going to happen to me. That That is the conviction that I had. We were together since I just turned 15. So, um, you know... We'd been together through so much change in life because we weren't adults then. We were, yeah. maybe weren't children, but we had a lot of growing up still to do. Um, and we'd been through so much together. And I was absolutely sure that we were solid and that I would be with him for the rest of my life. So whenever um, that ended, and of course ended at the same time as my my role in my family's business, it, it was absolutely huge. Um and if somebody had told me that either one of those things would happen um, alone, never mind the two would happen, and that the two would happen on the same weekend, I again I would have said I could not deal with that. Were you tempted to go back? Were you tempted to go back to one of your your constants? <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. Um, it's funny. Again, I suppose I saw it as an opening in my life. I, I thought to myself, well, he couldn't have picked a worse time to leave. Like, how come he managed to stick me for 22 years? Why could he not stick me for like another week, months, you know, six months, something like that way that exact weekend? At the same time, you know, I thought it was the worst time. But then I thought, hang on a minute. If this was meant to be some other way, it would be some other way if this wasn't meant to happen exactly the way it did then it wouldn't have so I trusted that there was some divine intelligence at work that knew more that had access to more information than I had access to at that time and I trusted that if I kept that open mindset that those answers would come in time and they did do you think if you hadn't adopted Louise Hayes and him approaches into your life do you think that would have been that would have been a, a different story then you wouldn't have been fit to handle that do you know even thinking about it now uh, it would actually get me down because I know it would have been I know it would have been it would have been very scary and very dangerous really if that makes sense I know it would have been would have been really bad and um, I know that I would have been the victim I would have thought this had happened to me and that I had been you know as good a wife and a mother as I could have been like everybody else I'm not perfect but I really did put a lot into being a wife and a mother so you know it was very hard to reconcile with this even with my new way of thinking but the old me would have absolutely felt like a victim and probably would have um used a lot of my energy in resentment towards my ex-husband absolutely and um, I know it wouldn't have been healthy for me at all or for anybody around me um, so absolutely, I I was able to use everything that I'd learned over the previous nine years that I didn't realise had been preparing me for this, but absolutely knew that later on that it had been preparing me to deal with all of this. And at that point as well, is that is that at the point that you were going towards, you know, where you're at now, heal yourself with, with Ashley? And was that where you took that transition? Yeah, just when I left my family's yeah. business um, and I had just to do the Heal Your Life training yes. and that's when, when he left, just on that same weekend. So, so really then I had already... St- committed to starting this new business which didn't really make any sense um knowing that we were going to be going from two wages to one wage and an uncertain new business but then all of a sudden my household had gone from having two wages coming in to you know so so it was scary and I was always a person who avoided change at all costs and I mean even small change never mind huge life changing decisions um so it, it absolutely necessitated would you know it necessitated me surrendering to the situation just completely surrendering to trust because I didn't if I was trying to think my way or plan my way out of that forget about it so I just had a trust that this was all happening for a reason that I just wasn't aware of at the time and I had to trust that, that everything was going to work out for my highest good and the highest good of everyone involved and that trust really helped me massively and it did 
and, and you're, it, you're and now it was, doing it. And it was rewarded. Yeah. That's the thing. The universe rewards whatever we put out. You know, if we put out fear and worry or re- regret and blame, we just attract more of that same energy. Yeah. So I just was was open to it and and trusted that the universe would bring me everything that I needed at at the right time. Yeah. So then you've now then you went and done your training, and obviously then you felt the call. You you know you knew this is what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. It, uh, was it hard at the start then, if you're working on yourself and that's all happened to you, to be, or was it like an escape to help people, you know, and, you know, because it was when you're working with them, you're not thinking of you or, or you know, or yeah. are, you, are, you, are you sometimes identifying things that you've done or that have happened to you or that you, mm-hmm. the feelings you felt in, in people you're waiting to connect and say, well, look. These are the tools that I used. Mm -hmm. It it is it is a bit of everything you've mentioned. To be honest, like if I am going through something that is personally very challenging for me, and I'm working with somebody, you know, I have to make sure that that my energy is very clear and that I'm on top of everything to be able to to be um to be of service to them, you know, and to be able to see them clearly. At the same time, I don't have to totally separate things. Maybe on like counselling and some other talking therapies, I do draw on my own experiences. And what what I find, the feedback that I gain from people is that that is so different for them, that they don't feel they're just speaking to somebody who's sitting, taking notes and nodding and agreeing and asking a few pertinent questions, you know, and is maybe in a different position to them or is very separate from them. Um, So obviously it has to be professional and it's not about me and I'm very clear on that but at the same time people do find it really really helpful to actually connect with another human being and to hear a bit about their experiences and how they have gone through similar things but maybe in a different way so that's given them a template for for maybe how they can what they can emulate you know just you're saying there about human beings but i, I just wanted to ask this question is it mainly females that would be going to yourself for this type of help or, or is it male you well, know, just both. for myself. Yes, yeah, so I I work with more so men than women. Yes, but yeah. I do work with men or, or work with women. I have worked with a lot of men as well. I work with teenagers sometimes, with children as well, and sometimes I work with couples. Now that could be a couple who are wanting to work on their relationship or their marriage, or that could be a couple who are actually separating or have already separated, and and their relationship is really not good, and maybe they have children and things like that. So I mean, really, I have learned that. Whatever somebody is going through or whatever somebody is struggling with, whether it is something within themselves, within their way of thinking, or whether it is something in their lives, that really I have surprised myself in, in the power of this work, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I've been approached by different people to work on different things. And to be honest, I thought I am not equipped to deal with this. I am not the right person. But People have found their lives changing and I, I'm not taking full credit for that. I know that I must be getting a lot of help and a lot of support from somewhere. But um Take some of the credit. <laughs> 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 but you, you seem very at peace with yourself and, and when you're discussing them things because I feel like we're prying away but sometimes asking that. And I, <laughs> all I wanted to do was to give people a, an idea of where where you were and where you come. You, you, you have a young boy and you obviously had to continue a, a certain level of a relationship with your ex-husband because mm-hmm. you're co-parenting mm-hmm. and uh, how, how was that then after that because i know yeah. i know a lot of people just want to stab them absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah that's it well you know killian i suppose and a lot of people want to use the chat mm-hmm. so true like I, I i've seen it and mm-hmm. and when that starts happening you know that there's no winners there's no, nobody winning absolutely there. But the temptation there, you know, because you know that'll hurt them. Mm-hmm. But it's hurting you and it's hurting your child. Mm-hmm. But some people that's going through a breakup at the minute, they can't help it. They just, they just, they're so twisted with anger. They want, they want to stick that knife in, but they don't realize who else is cutting as they're doing it. Mm-hmm. But how was that for you? Was that, was that not challenging? It, it was very challenging. Um, I suppose. I suppose I thought to myself in a way whenever my husband left, well, that was a waste of 22 years. You know, he just took 22 years of my life and then discarded me at the end of it, you know. But then when I when I worked on that a bit, I thought, well, hang on a minute. It wasn't a waste. That society tells us that that is a failed relationship. Obviously, it's a failure because it's over now and it was meant to last for life. Yes. Um, 
What I would say is that our relationship now is still a good relationship. So that is testament to the fact that our relationship was good. If it still is good now and it is, it has survived all of those challenges. So to me then, I look at it that that relationship was perfect for him and perfect for I for all of those years. And that came to an end. And I suppose what I was aware that what was going to be healthy and good for Killian was actually the same thing as what was going to be healthy for me and healthy for his father, if that makes sense. So I was ensuring that that the decisions that I would make for Killian's good, would I knew that I would benefit from those decisions and that his daddy would as well. So I didn't want Killian just to see us paying lip service to this idea of getting on well and just, you know, smiling in front of him. Mm. And then when he would go out of the room, then kill each other, you know, mm. I wanted it to be genuine. And I mean, we do still care about each other. We still confide in each other about things. We're there for each other. Um, and like, I remember my, um, I now have a partner, sorry, but it was something we can go into as well, if you like or not. But um, I have a partner and not long after we met, um, my partner sourced Liverpool tickets for my son and his daddy. And I remember my brother happened over here, I was talking about this and he said, that's just weird. Like, that's really weird that, that they, he would be getting tickets for him. And I thought, you know what, it's weird for it not to be that way. Because the way I look at it is, say if you start a relationship with a person or you get married to a person or you have a child with a person, that is the same person. You chose that person. You have to take responsibility for your own choices, not for their behaviour and what they have done but I mean that person is the same person at the end of the relationship as they were at the beginning and you know we have to see ourselves in all of our decisions and take responsibility for everything in our life you know there has to be also a level of respect too this is what I always said you can fall out of love with somebody Mm -hmm. but not being respectful you know not you know if if this was somebody that you cared and loved for Mm -hmm. you know just have the respect I think a lot of the time is people have no backbone and they don't mm-hmm. want to st- uh, uh, say the thing and do the thing right. And there's, mm-hmm. there's two ways to always do things. And sometimes I think they take the easy way because it's short term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it comes down to, if you don't love them, you still need to have a level of respect as the yeah. mother of your child or, or you know, you, you know, you need to, as you say, it, it, it's weird because it's not common. It's mm-hmm. not weird. It's just, <laughs> it's not common. Yeah. But for a lot of people there will be like, I, I couldn't handle it. And there will be a lot of people that... Uh, I don't know how you know. I don't know how I would be if you know, like uh, my wife had, had, had a, was married before and, mm-hmm. and, and had a close. With it. I would. Yes. I would probably. But that was that's, that's me. Are you may feel threatened by that? that I, that's yes. me. Or that's that's, that's down to me. I, yeah. I don't know, and I think that's just a territorial man thing that I would I struggle with. That. That. Yeah. But I would say you're saying it's weird because it's not common it's and not. it's not thing. Yeah. But you know, if if that's working, that is mm-hmm. absolutely fair play to you yeah. and. Uh, you know, and it's brilliant. And it, it does show people because massively, massively, I always see this. And I've seen mm-hmm. this time and time again. The child's the one that loses out. It's so sad. In the middle of that. So we're now, and you, 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 every time, <laughs> it's going to cry again. I, I, I'm a prior and I'm bringing back. But I, I, we're, we, because we've discussed and we've had a conversation before and we're saying, you, you, you kept getting your trials. You kept getting your tribulations. You kept getting tested and... Mm-hmm. and and was there ever a time you're like, I can't be bothered with the, the, the going, you know, or is it a process? Is it, had you learned, is it a process that you have learned with this and that you do now that when other, other trials have come into your life that you, you start, you start each of them are addressed the same way? Is that? Yeah, no, it's a journey to get there. You know, for me, it's not about just being positive for the sake of being positive because, you know, for me, being positive is somewhere where I naturally arrive after doing the inner work, after looking at my experiences from a lot of different angles and and just trying to tease them out and work them out to, to a way where I can make peace with them, you know, trying to try and just to get on to get on board with them and, and see the learn and see the growth, see the gifts and, and experience. But that doesn't mean that, that I negate the difficult negative emotions. You know, to me happiness or peace or positivity to me if you want to get to those places um you have to go through that tunnel of maybe those dark feelings to get there you know so if you want to get to the other side you have to go through the tunnel to get there that's the way I look at it that it's not about faking it or about just painting a smile on your face you know it is about being real with yourself and really 
using those difficult experiences as a way to get to know the real person within you, you know, who you wouldn't have gotten to know in that way only for that difficult experience, you know. So it's about it's about realizing that you can grow through everything you go through and you can you can uncover so much strength that was already there, but that you wouldn't have discovered if life hadn't turned you upside down and shook you and seen what fell out and, and what stuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you so we've moved on now and uh you've met a new partner and things are going good again. Not good again, but you you things are starting to come back to air. Mm-hmm. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And then you get tested again. Yes. Uh-huh. So do you do you want to talk us through? Or? Yeah. So well, I suppose now it's. Actually I look really bad here. I'm praying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not just at because all. we've had a conversation. Of course. Before and, no, and, and, I'm open because I mean I don't know if somebody listening to this, you know, could be helped by hearing this. Whether this particular experience is one that they can relate to, or whether it's just that this is a difficult experience and it gives them a, a different way to to maybe relate to difficult experiences they go through so it's I can now say last year which is great it's it's last year now but in April last year I was diagnosed with breast cancer and um I don't know what what else do you want to know <laughs> so this so this is what we were discussing sometimes yeah. this is an awkward subject for a man and yes. and, and shy away and mm-hmm. me I, I I don't know the I'm trying to be that I'm not coming across completely ignorant, and I probably am ignorant because I don't know. But mm-hmm. it must have been scary. Like that must yeah. have been like there, there's another. Like, you're bound to be saying at this point, where am I getting the break here? That yeah, that, that uh, you know. So what when you got the diagnosis, or you obviously suspected a lump, or was it a routine scan, mm-hmm. or yeah, I found a lump myself. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, so that's that. This is. See, it's awkward because men mm-hmm. want to shy away from this. And they uh, don't of course. And, and we, we spoke before this here and I said to you that um, a good friend of mine, his wife, had the same. Mm-hmm. And I, as a man, felt awkward if mm-hmm. I come into her company and then I was asking her about it. Mm-hmm. You know, as in, how's things we... Like, for a man to ask... Mm-hmm. How, and it's it's not your turn around saying, oh, cancer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's about that part of the body. For mm-hmm. a man to ask yes. about that, if mm-hmm. that makes sense, you yeah. know. But if I like, obviously, if I was to meet you in the street and I knew you and mm-hmm. I said to you, "How's things and how's everything going?" Mm-hmm. I was, would you take that as being like? And I would be. I would be sincere, and I'm asking mm-hmm. you about that. There, mm-hmm. would you be like, "Just you know, he's talking about my breasts." Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just I'm saying it. Do you know what I mean? Though that is a very. Do you know what I mean? Though, like, yeah. I'm. I'm He's asking about my breast here. Of course. Sort of like a taboo yes, topic. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's none of a effing business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm only asking because I care. Uh-huh. You know, um, you're, you're on the other end of it. So mm-hmm. if, I, if I was to come and say to you, how are you and how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Like, did it happen? You know, and, and obviously mm-hmm. people would ask you anyway, friends or whatever else. But yes. As a male, a male mm-hmm. asking you. Yeah, well, I suppose I find that very, very healing, you know, just for somebody to to come and allow themselves to be vulnerable and to ask you how they are, to express that interest, even though they don't feel equipped to be able to help you or to maybe understand what you're going through. But it's just a human connecting with another human and they're in their suffering. And, you know, to me, that's that was really, really helpful whenever people did broach the subject, you yeah. know. Is it is it is it an old school I said earlier, I said a no school Irish mentality where we, you know, people aren't very, they don't talk about illness and they don't, you know, they, we've struggled in this country for years to talk about mental illness. Like we're, we're, we're 20, 30, 40 years behind any other country when it comes to that. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's a very old stiffer step up her lip, don't let on and thing. But uh, so I think sometimes that's more, you know, people think if they don't ask, it's not there or mm-hmm. you know, they avoid that's the it. subject or, uh-huh. or, worry then that you might show a vulnerability to them mm-hmm. and then they're like there, there is literally people petrified mm-hmm. of people crying to them yeah there is people <laughs> petrified you ever see that like you know i don't know yeah. what to do yeah so that's happened to you and then obviously you're petrified everyone's petrified even using the word that's we're mm-hmm. all petrified of that mm-hmm. and, and it's becoming so much it's one in two people now affected so mm-hmm. like there's there's four of us sitting in this room. So mm-hmm. like you know the the statistics is there for us for anybody to be scared or discuss it or 
or not every every person's now been touched. There's nobody mm-hmm. that's not been touched or it hasn't been close to or is close to at the minute. Mm-hmm. It's it's a very very and that's why I find that, you know, it shouldn't be a situation that we're 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 pussyfooting about and talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Because that you should be fit to talk about it. And Absolutely. ask that, and ask that, that yeah. question. And, and the only reason you're asking it is from a place mm-hmm. of you care about that yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then I seen um what what was the process then you, you know after lockdown so was it after lockdown yes it was in 2022 that's right yeah which uh, was that early or was it th- i know i'm asking this but mm-hmm. it, there is there was people in lockdown that got diagnosis and then got mm-hmm. a, a, a delay in, right. in, in seeing and and yes. treating because there was things there was closed or held up and mm-hmm. stuff like that so obviously you're as soon as you get that day you, you just you must be petrified and, and what yeah. then what was what was the process then well i suppose i had to have quite a few mammograms mri scans needle biopsies different tests to ascertain exactly the type of cancer and um, what stage it was and there was a query on the, the other side as well um, and there were queries on a couple of different areas on the one side so one test to to give an answer seemed to then show up something else and then that required another test so that was very disconcerting because that drew out the whole process that's it and and really yeah it was sort of scary thinking what what am i I facing here so whenever they had um all of the information gathered and were able to give me a a proper diagnosis then they were able to formulate a treatment plan so that um involved surgery and um nine sessions of radiotherapy and then a hormone tablet for five years then because mine was hormone sensitive breast cancer, so. Well, it uh, and what 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 way are you now? Is it ongoing treatment? Do you, do you get tested every so often, or what way? Well, do you know? I, I suppose I do find it strange, but again, this is where my trust and I suppose my beliefs really are are, are vital because I the, the first test that I have, for want of a better word is going to be a year after my operation. So I actually have no idea right now. So my surgery was in the middle of June 2022. So I'll have to wait till, well, again, I don't know exactly when, but I'll, I'll hear. So I have no idea what it looks like there. So I'm just hoping that that I'm doing all that I can. And I suppose that maybe leads me on to something else briefly, just that I was very grateful to avail of all of the medical care that was available to me, like the operation, the radiotherapy and all of the tests. Um, having said that, I just didn't hand responsibility for my health and my body and my healing over to the medical people whose care I was under. I made lots of different lifestyle choices and I'm now following a protocol where I take, if you saw what I took every day, so many vitamins, so many supplements, so many herbs and I've changed what I eat and I've implemented juicing and different things like that and do oxygen therapy and do lots of alternative therapies and um, because I suppose I believe in that holistic approach and do you feel the benefits of it absolutely because the radiotherapy was very sore on me I have chronic adrenal fatigue and lots of different symptoms um, relating to that and really all of those symptoms worsened a lot after the radiotherapy so really I, I had to go on my own journey and try to source people who could advise me on different herbs and different supplements for these different um, symptoms so so I definitely feel like I have built up a lot of strength and that I'm going in the right direction you're doing everything you can do you want to know that you're doing yeah. everything you can do and you're that, right. uh, that's brilliant and and mm-hmm. yeah. I, I need to get my ass in here. <laughs> but, but when you're doing that, your mind's sharpening up. I honestly believe that once you mm-hmm. once you start sticking the plan and you're feeding yourself good yes. food and you're you're doing training something or you're exercising and you're you, you obviously have a lot of meditation and you and this is one thing we say about you were talking about health. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives health time till your health takes your time. Mm-hmm. So that's it. So it it. Mental health is a very similar, like a muscle. Yeah, but you got to be. You, you can't just turn around and say, "Right, I want to fix my mental health." When it's gone the other road, mm-hmm. you got to be doing proactive things to to like taking time out. A lot of people do meditation. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you know, like the. It's different for me. I like to take. I like to take my cup out to Ramana and and let him rock and roll. And it's great mm-hmm. meditation for me. I love seeing him laughing and playing around. And the thing. people have different things they do. And Mine's obviously. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Swimming, get into the pool, 
They reckon the, this cold water, water therapy only. You know, I'm not a good mom with the cold. Remember, we went swimming cold. Yeah. But they reckon it's cold water therapy. But what I mean is, mm-hmm. you're right. There is other things. There's alternatives. Mm-hmm. There is other things that you can do to make yourself feel better. But we're going to now come back because we, 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 there's going to be people here. January's a hard month. It's it's. Mm-hmm. Is it me or does it just seem like the country the last while there, we've had a lot of fatalities in the road? Mm-hmm. Yes, we've had a lot of. Of local people, well known, have passed away. We've just a cloud seems mm-hmm. to be over. What would you say to somebody in the coming in the new year? And the thing is, what we're talking about now to some people there, you you've read that, and 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 I was hearing it as you were talking about going through the Louise Hayes. Until you get a level of awareness, you're not willing to go that wee bit outside the box. If you if you if you I read the secret and. Uh, other and the law of attractions, reading different things about that there, and now I'd have been very close off this last year, so I would have been laughing and saying they're fucked, right? <laughs> but as your awareness grows a wee bit, another wee bit creeps in, mm-hmm, that's and true. there's things that you're now more open to to the thing. So as you were saying, when I first read that, not really. And mm-hmm. let's face it, we're 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 from Kirkstown, New York we're, It's a country town. We're we're well away. We're well behind the city. <laughs> well, and then as you, as you come up the Oma line, we're getting further and further oh, away yeah, further from the water. So so some people will say, "Oh Jesus, you know, they're, they're down drinking in the river, like they're drinking oh, yeah. the water." Mm-hmm. But it is, and it's something we want to discuss. So we want to get more into the techniques that you use because it's, it's coming in January. And and I had when I first reached out to you said I'd love to do a January uh, podcast because people it's it's a, it's 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 called the Grey Month or something, mm-hmm. and you attach that. And uh, I was like a few soft type of, but as we were talking, we're like the road to feeling better is more a process and than a. That we're going to give instant tips and instant things, but mm-hmm. a few things that can mm-hmm. help, like you were saying to Sean with the breathing. Well, mm-hmm. That's one of the oldest, isn't it? That's one of the oldest meditation. It's one of the oldest things that goes back. Like I think they had that, like you know, in some of the oldest books recording that over in Asia they would try breathing techniques for relaxing, and and the monks would use it, and it's hundreds of years old, and mm-hmm. they would meditate that solely through concentrating on the breath, solely through trying to think of nothing else, mm-hmm. but. Some of the techniques that you would use, obviously, people come with different things, mm-hmm. and you're trying to relate to them and and what you think would work for them, and you have the techniques. It is and one thing I want to ask you: Is Louise? Hey, is anyone? Is that there's not like Ireland wouldn't be full of people doing the same sort of practice, would it? Or is, is there similar practices? There's other, you know, things that are similar to it, is there? Or is this like a, a unique style? You know. Well, I suppose it is unique, but at the same time would would complement a lot of other um, approaches as well. But really, I suppose what I offer has evolved. You know, I trained in Louise Hayes theories, but I suppose I use my own my own intuition. Um, so that is something that that I, I use and have developed a lot over the years. You know, so just being able to connect with people and 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 actually, a lot of people find whenever they come out of a session is that they have gotten to know themselves better than they ever did in their whole lives through what I've maybe told them about themselves, you know, that kind of way. So Louise Hay taught me so much, but I suppose also led me to what was already there within me also. And I suppose there are other inspirational people who I have learned a lot from as well and read from, and I suppose any of the knowledge that I've gained through my own experiences or through my learning, I bring that all. So if Sean was saying there, if Sean come to you mm-hmm. now and... You were saying, Sean, that just, just frustrated and you're getting a bit, you're feeling it. If Sean, if we were coming now and we were, we were just saying that there, that, that what, what would you, what would your first thing for, would your first thing to be? The, we don't want to give away all. Well, jump in. <laughs> it, it's, it's probably more about what I talk about and how I'm feeling and everything else. Like me, just saying, I have a bit of a tightness in my chest. Yes. I'm sure you're not just going to turn around and say, we need to do breathing techniques, or, or do you? That's or it. Is it more sitting down? Well, Stop why do you back. think you're feeling... Do you know what I mean, though? Yeah, well, it would be looking at... at I suppose I, I listen to a person's words, you know, where words give us away, you know, and, and listen to the different patterns and the experiences because all of the patterns in our life are our own patterns. You know, wherever we go, we take ourselves with us, you know? So it's, it's supposed to enlighten you about what you're attracting to yourself through your own beliefs and the way you do speak to yourself. But I would, I suppose, be working with you on 
on the things that are affecting you negatively trying to target those directly but also yes working with you on your breath as well trying to see what is going on behind the scenes that is showing up in this physical manifestation you know but I suppose I believe in working on the inner and the outer so working on what is what is happening within you that is showing up as this breathing problem but actually working on the breathing as well it's so fun. not just one or the other I believe in working on the outer and the inner it's, you know? it's funny you're, you're sitting there and I'm like I have this tightness in my chest, uh-huh. and I feel like that bear beside, behind you. <laughs> like, look behind you. I feel like him. I feel like just going, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There is a technique. Let it out. Roar, or shooting or shooting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, th- that's something like we've all learned that anger is a negative emotion. And we've learned that as very young children. If a child has a if a child is really angry, well, that's a temper tantrum. That's bad behavior. They need to go and sit in the corner set, or have set a time out, out or they're not having their dessert or they're not getting to watch TV later or whatever it is. Yeah. So we're punished for our anger. We're shamed for it. But really, anger can be a very positive emotion. You know, it can incite you towards action that is that is that is positive. So, I mean, it's what it's like every other emotion. It's what we do with the emotion that dictates whether it's healthy or not healthy. Holding on to it. That is certainly not healthy. Yeah. Going and punching somebody with your anger, that's not healthy, but holding on to it is not healthy for you. So it's actually giving yourself an outlet to feel all of your feelings and not to judge them, just to allow them to be because our feelings just need us to to give them time and space, you know, to, to, to feel them and to express them. It's funny, I was reading one time and it says, you know, a child displays its emotions perfectly mm-hmm. and it's us as adults that teach yes. them to not... We say don't cry mm-hmm. when we should be encouraging them to cry. If they're yeah. upset, we need to figure it out way. Or, you know, as you say, anger, we're, 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 we're actively teaching them to mm-hmm. hide and, and not display. It's like it's, it's the counter. That's it. They have that emotional but intelligence. I, I, I agree with all that, okay? As in, you know, children, if they're having a tantrum or, you know, but see the whole time out thing, send the mm-hmm. child the time out. I don't know whether I agree with it or not, mm-hmm. but I'm a parent. Mm-hmm. And if my child is racking about the house and beating his sister with a sword, yes. I say, you express yourself, son. You just, you be you. you I'll you express my yourself. boot up your ass. You know, like, 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 like I, I get it. You know, you're not going to do that. And he's, he's, he's a great, whatever it is, yes. time to get you to time out. You shouldn't be doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's me that's making, right, don't you do that. And go. And you've, I think you've, there's a difference in emotion and discipline. There has to be a level. You can't let him beat her over the head with a sword, but at the same time, why does he want it? <laughs> That's it. It's it's not seeing the behavior as the problem. It's seeing the behavior as the way that the problem is presenting itself. You know, it's it's about looking at what's going on behind the behavior, what's going on within that person, whether it's a child or an adult. It's just gonna know. be shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny you were saying that because it, this was our week when we were talking about when people were writing negative things, and we were like. Well, what what's happening then? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not me that they're, they're writing stuff about, but it's not me that has that that immediate issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what is what is wrong? You know, they're they're obviously going through hard. Yeah. And and like that's that's you, you actually. I, said I, I kept on saying it. I was like, there's mm-hmm. some people are just negative towards you, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't matter what you're doing. Yes. I was like, the joke that we make is they just need a hug. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, though. But it's even like you, you were saying this week that you were affected by things that normally would just run off you. You know, how we see and feel about everybody and everything is a reflection of how we see and feel about ourselves. You know, we're projecting. We're looking at everybody else through the same lens through yeah. which we're looking at ourselves through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us, actually, just... So for some people, I'm I'm not aware of any of the techniques of uh, Louise Hayes. So uh, have you any techniques that you could show that could work for me and Sean? Yeah, well, funny, whenever you say a technique from Louise Hay, then her most notable technique is mirror work. Yeah. So we all look in a mirror every day. He looks a lot in the mirror. He looks a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Look, Look, sure. if, if, if you're going out for the night, <laughs> right? It's not that sort of murder workshop. Oh, it's not because that Because he spends sorry. a lot of time it's in the It's not that sort of murder we've, we've all done it. You know, you, the, before you go out through the door, you give yourself one more wee look. <laughs> and a wee, a wee wink and just like <laughs> shut yourself up. And you've, yeah. you've, you've nailed it. Confidence yeah. You've nailed well, it. We would have liked Louise Hay because Louise Hay would have chatted herself up in the mirror and that sort of thing. And look, to be honest, that is exactly what repelled me. Um, from mirror work initially because I thought it was really superficial like obviously I wear makeup and I go to the mirror so you might think who am I to be talking with things that are superficial but I thought that that mirror work was something that was purely on that surface level like you blow yourself a kiss and say that you're wonderful and I thought well that's just that that just I don't don't get that I don't see how that's going to help so I had a lot of resistance to mirror work so you asked me earlier on whenever I read the book did I just implement the practices just straight away absolutely not again it's like what you were saying about health with my mental health and with my physical health and emotional health I only really made any changes out of necessity when I absolutely had to so it was the same with the mirror work when I first tried mirror work very reluctantly um, I said to myself in the mirror looking into my eyes um, the words that Louise Hay says to say in the mirror and those words were I love you I love and accept you exactly as you are so when I said those words to myself in the mirror I found it very very difficult to say it but once I said it there was this almost violent backlash that this like voice from within me said I bleeping hate you that was how I felt about myself so I thought to myself I'm never going to do this again I'm never going to do more work because that feeling of hatred that I felt I didn't ever want to experience that again and of course in my very simplistic view at that time I blamed mirror work for how I felt about myself at that time but of course this type of mirror work was just bringing to the surface and reflecting back to me how I already felt about myself but I didn't want to feel that any more strongly than I already did so I boycotted mirror work for nine whole years and I only revisited mirror work again that time whenever I left my family's business and my husband left me and I was going about in a daze and I thought to myself, okay, I had just done the Heal Your Life training with a lot of mirror work and still did not like it at all, still was very uncomfortable with it. But I thought to myself at this time with what I was going through, I knew I needed some more support. And I thought all of these emotions that I'm experiencing that I feel totally engulfed by, I need to bring all of these emotions to the mirror. And I had no idea what I was going to say when I got there. I certainly wasn't going to say I love you as you are because I tried that before and it was awful. So I just took myself to the mirror and made made myself very vulnerable because there were a lot of emotions there and none of us want to feel those painful emotions or or see them and when you go to the mirror in this way there is nowhere to hide so I went to the mirror and I looked into my eyes and the words that came out I don't remember if I said it silently or if I said it out loud but the words that just came out of nowhere were you're okay everything is okay and those words I didn't believe those words were true those words were the opposite of what I believed to be true and if somebody had told me that that I was going to be able to reassure myself more so than somebody else, I would have said no, because I always looked outside of myself for validation, for acceptance, for help making decisions, for security, for everything. I never looked inside myself, and a lot of people don't. But whenever I connect with myself in the mirror um, at this time of pain, I really made such a connection with myself that I had never made through my whole life and not through the nine years of working on myself the long hard way and I learned then that what Louise Hay said about mirror work and that it is the quickest way maybe not the easiest but it is the quickest way to make that connection with yourself one of unconditional acceptance and love that that's when I learned she was right well you have brought I very yeah. kindly brought two mirrors, and they're um, heart-shaped mirrors. Well, well, we're off to a good start. So, <laughs> so you're going to give it a go. I love the wee gold one here, on. Yeah. Sorry. I love the wee gold one. The wee gold one, yeah. <laughs> so what is it we're doing? Well, I haven't really thought too much about what we're doing either. So this okay. is a bit outside well, my comfort zone, if that's well, any help, because nope, I'm sure it's no outside yours. And I don't feel Be comfortable safe. doing this with you, <laughs> on, to be fair. <laughs> right? Just. Sean, you look in the mirror, and I look in mine. But <laughs> just before we go into this, and we will go into this, and, and uh-huh. I I'm not making line because the, the yeah. Uh, uh, well, it took you nine years, so we're only going to give this a go now. So I know. Just the thing. Yeah. But they say the first person you like is yourself. It's true. So the probably the hardest part of that is is mm-hmm. at that point you're you're not. 
and the facade and and, and yeah. the thing that you're you're talking. Sometimes people don't like the person they become more than the, 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 the thing. Yeah. So I would say I've seen I have seen this now. You're saying my work. I have seen a, a, like a positive affirmation where you're talking to yourself and you're you're, you're looking at yeah. yourself and addressing yourself and, and yeah. And I mean, you can use it in the morning for motivation, and you can use it to psych yourself up. But I suppose the way that I'm going to be guiding you is, is a wee bit deeper than that. But you yeah. can use it in the morning, going out saying like we're going to have a really well, good day or yeah. well, whatever it is. That lighthearted. But Sean's joking. He goes, I, I give myself a wee wink yes. on the way out and say, you're mm-hmm. looking good. There's, there, there's, there's, some, there's some truth to that. Absolutely. If, if the, the last thing he's told himself before he left the house was, mm-hmm. he's looking good, he's feeling good. That's it. And you it's know, that positive um, affirmation too. Yeah. Well, I said this before about people find things and they might look at this and they go, what shit are they doing and all. But it's what it makes you feel. That's and, it. And, and I... You know, I said this here about other other like mindfulness and, and people do things and people from outside and more often than not there's something because they have something going on and they have something to say about them. But that person's feeling great. So who's the real loser yeah. In, in, yeah. in that? Yeah. You know, you, you're a bit angry and you want to give it off and you're saying something negative about that. That person's loving life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's wrong? Who, you know that's it who, yeah. who's the fool right what are, so what am so I saying for, so for people that's listening though yes. we're now sitting with two so, mirrors yes. of us. Sorry, so, so anybody at home can go to a mirror or go and get their own yeah. mirror yeah. if yeah. they want to partake as well but on a yeah. more serious level yeah. if somebody is now and, and we will, we'll bring this by mm-hmm. January um, maybe they're in debt maybe mm-hmm. they didn't get maybe they got bad news at Christmas maybe they're, they're man, maybe they're losing someone well let's grind it back so you would say we we'll go to the mirror yeah, well, well, really, I suppose to give a, a wee bit of background to it, um, this is really about learning to become your own source of everything that you have been lacking or everything that you ever may need. It's learning to look within yourself because in the world we live in, we're taught to look everywhere but within ourselves mm-hmm. to change our appearance to have that this house when we have that car then we'll have made it you know to have a relationship to get married to have that house to have a baby to have another baby to lose the weight whatever it is you know we're looking outside of ourselves and a lot of the places where we're looking not only are they not helping us they're actually harming us you know so really this is about just stripping it all back and connecting with that person who you have been with through everything you've gone through through everything you've been through in your life and this person who you're going to be with for your whole life and really making that deep connection being so deeply rooted within yourself so that no matter what happens in your life that 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 connection gets you through everything you know and that you trust yourself and that you know you have everything you need within you that you're ever going to need you know and sometimes you know i'm going to be guiding you with words to to facilitate making that connection but really when you get used to doing it the words are like a a prop that you know sometimes might help and sometimes you don't need a lot of the time i just look just look in the mirror and there are no words because say if you're feeling in a fog or you're feeling like your energy is off and you don't know why like the way you've been this week you don't need to ask the questions you don't need to get the answers just making that connection is all that you need but, but even looking at this mirror now like yes you don't even just sitting here now with the mirror, you don't yes. actually sit and look at yourself. At the person? Yes. No, it's like about even, this even hair. Now I'm sitting looking at myself. Mm-hmm. As you say there, before I come out through the door, I was putting a bit of gel in my hair, making sure I was she, you know, yes. you know what I mean? And walking out through the door. On that purely but surface you, level. But yeah. sitting here now and actually looking at myself. Mm-hmm. I actually look tired, you know. But but honestly though, and I know this is maybe, we're, it's, it's not about that, but just to sit Sorry. and look. He's distracting me, sorry, but Sean. But just to sit and look at yourself, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? No, when, when do you ever do that? No, that's it. We don't. And you know, that's something I say to a lot of people after they've done it, because every client I guide through my work finds it really difficult, but really, really powerful. And the thing is that what I say to people often at the end of a session, if we've done my work, is that we've kind of spent our whole life looking everywhere for things that will make us happier or healthier or feel better about ourselves. And, we've, and the answer is literally at the end of our nose. Like when we look in the mirror, the answer is literally staring us in the face yeah. every time we look in the mirror, but we're looking everywhere but there. Yeah. So we'll try it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you're looking in, so obviously you can look around your face, look at your hair and all the rest. But then if you settle on your eyes, so you're endeavoring to really connect with your eyes. And anytime that you find yourself being distracted and looking around your face, just keep bringing your focus back to your eyes. And I will give you some words and probably it would be easier if you say those words looking into your eyes, if you say them silently. 
other ways you might distract each other. So, so looking into your eyes, I'd like you to say to yourself, you're safe. Into yourselves? Or just into yourselves, yeah, yeah, okay. uh-huh. So just making that connection with your eyes and then saying to yourself, just those words might seem a bit strange, but you're talking to yourself and you're saying, you're safe. Coming back to your eyes and saying to yourself silently, I am here with you. I will always be with you. Probably feels strange, but know that anything you do for the first time in your life is going to feel strange. So try to go beyond the strangeness. Try to connect with yourself in this experience as much as you can. So keeping focused on your eyes, I'd like you to say to yourself, I'm sorry for being hard on you. I'm sorry for not always supporting you. You are a good person. You deserve to be healthy and happy. I love you. Just take your time. Let those words sink in. Just take your time. Just come back to your eyes again, no matter how scary it is, no matter how sad you feel, no matter how strange it feels, just stay with yourself and looking into your eyes again. I really love you. And any feelings that come up, allow them to flow. Know that this is part of the healing. The more work brings to the surface anything that goes against any of these words that you're saying. So just take your time. And if there's anything else you'd like to say to yourself now, feel free to do that. And just whenever you're ready, you can set your mirror down, but take your time. Holy fuck. I know for people watching that. Give them on a minute. Give them on a minute. There's going to be people watching that, right? And that they're not going to, they're not going to understand that. Yeah. But I, I just what we done there now. Like this is obviously going out and it can be replayed. I would love people that's listening to this right now to go and grab a mirror. Yes. Rewind it back. Yes. And just do, do it. exactly what yes. we done there now to yeah. see that to go to go through what we done there now. Well, like I don't know if anybody can see, but. Sean, I mean, can well, I mean, uh, do you I want to say I, how I feel right now is yeah. I'm really hard on myself. Mm-hmm. Like, like I mean, really hard on myself. Yeah. And and you could see and feel that more intensely. Yeah. There. Mm-hmm. Like I know I'm anyway. I know yes. I'm hard on myself, but whatever you're actually saying that to yourself, yes. you're like, why are you so hard on yourself? Well, to me, that's the quickest way. We all live here. This is where we live, and this is where we've been conditioned to live mm-hmm. all of our life. Nobody's ever actually said it, but that's what the whole world has taught us. But the mirror work is the quickest way to get from here all the way to here, yeah. and that's where the healing happens. Yes, mm-hmm. changing our mindset, changing our thoughts, but I suppose I describe what I do as heart-centered healing. Yeah. To me, that's what makes it different. Because a person is really, really connected authentically with themselves, you know, and that's what you just did. And this is about like feeling vulnerable too, mm-hmm. because obviously this is going out to yeah. the world as such. But there, there, there is your vulnerability. We instantly like this. This is, I suppose, my instant reaction there was, "Oh shit, we're back here, and this is something we're recording and going out." <laughs> delete. And, and <laughs> not, not, no, but it's not. Not delete. No, not delete. But explain. Explain. It's, if yeah. any of you are sitting there and watching that, and you're like, "What the." <laughs> Do it. do it. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Do, That's it. Do that. Yeah. And do it right. Hold on. Because I, one thing I says to you was that me and Sean we open the thing mm-hmm. and we do it. Yeah. Do something like that. Mm-hmm. Wholeheartedly. Before you make the comment or pass. Absolutely. Bit, yeah. Because it's intense. It's funny. It shot up a regret of my life just out of nowhere. An instant. Regret I had that has haunted me. And it just, boom, shot it straight up. Straight in. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe it's different for people. But all I would say is, if you're watching that, that, that would, 
weird. Well, look, freaky. It actually freaked me out a wee bit now. Yeah, but I but, have to say, the, the two of you, in different ways, the two of you as well, Owen, the two of you afterwards look like different people. Your whole demeanour changed. It's very sobering, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But even right. even as you were talking, and I was just looking at it, uh-huh. I could feel my breathing changing. Right. I felt my breathing changing as I was breathing deeper. Mm-hmm. I said about, it, you know, this, this tightness in my chest because I'm beating myself up. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm being hard on myself. I felt like that starting to slip away slightly. Uh huh. Yes. And I do feel better for mm-hmm. doing that there now. It's hard mm-hmm. to maintain contact with yourself. You know? It is. It, it, it when, is. When that when that shot up. Because even I as you were talking, away and you were saying look back, and mm-hmm. you're, you're, <laughs> looking row, yeah. you're looking every row. You're looking every row back. But yeah, I know that. That's why I would have said that because I know. Well. Like, yeah. I wasn't me expecting and to and be <laughs> sitting here now feeling like I, I did. To be honest with you, yeah. Sean, I, you were emotional. I, I honestly, you were emotional. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, but I'm going to tell you something. Sean was on to me earlier today, and I actually genuinely was saying you're emotion. You've been emotionally charged, and you, you, you know, you've been bubbling. So probably mm-hmm. that was just it coming up. Mm-hmm. But up and out. <laughs> people will be listening to this. Say they listen to. On Spotify as opposed to watching it. Ah, yes. So for what we just done there mm-hmm. was uh, we 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 done mirror work. So yeah. I didn't know what it was, and now a very perf- I don't know a perverse way that I would like to try and explore that more and thing. And it was probably me and Sean's your next one to sign up. But actually, <laughs> and and we, and guys, any of you is watching, we will be putting Ashley's details in, and any is that felt that this resonated or you're you're there and you want to know. And you want to do this? We'll be putting Ashley's details, and they can feel free to contact you and, and, and yeah. catch up. The there, Sean, it's it's the instant realization where we're back, and it's the vulnerability that comes with doing these things because you put yourself out there, and a mm-hmm. lot of people will turn around and say, "Look at them too sappy," it's and blah blah blah. But that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's all right. And I and and I would say, Sean, we're raw at it. We we bang this out because there's gonna be also mm-hmm. on the very flip side of that, the people that are laughing loudest are normally the ones that in the back of their head they're like, "Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't actually mind." Doing that, yeah. Below or, that is just fear. Or yeah. I, that's all. You know, yeah. I wouldn't actually like. Know. I'm totally open to try and everything and anything. Mm-hmm. You know, if it if it helps me as a person, well mm-hmm. then I'm as, I'm open for it. As, I mm-hmm. think that only come to me as I get older. Mm-hmm. Because I'll be honest with you, if I was watching this ten years ago, I think mm-hmm. all three of us are full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, it's as your awareness grows and as your as you grow as a person, mm-hmm. and, and 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 as things happen and and and, and things that affect your life or. As you grow older and, and, and you experience different things, it's only then that you realise, you know, you're open to mm-hmm. these things. And, and that you need these things. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, you're talking, everyone looks outward mm-hmm. instead of inward. That's it. And, and, and like in any, no matter Louise Hayes, no matter how many you go back to or how many even counselling or anything, it's always about stripping it back and looking in. Because... Mm-hmm. As you say, some of them will resonate with ours. The core, our core beliefs and values, no matter what the system or no matter what they are, and and as you say, you could connect with people because there's not a there's not a million different things, a million different core beliefs or te- you know, people are generally made up the same. You know, you have your guilt, your anger, your mm-hmm. your, your thing. So when you, people there that's listening, at, you know, they might think, oh well, that's not really for me. Mm-hmm. But all them things, all them things are coming back to to. Looking after yourself, and do you, this is the thing I say: Do you practice daily then things you've learned? Is this? It's a. It's a. Pro, it is a. Pro, it's a. It's your work in your uh-huh. mental health out. I do, but I suppose I practice different techniques intuitively. You know, for me. Um, uh, this yeah. may not be right for somebody else, but for me, it's not. I do this at eight in the morning. I do this at four in the afternoon because I think I should do it. You know, I just do whatever I feel. I need at any given time, you know. So it could be going to the mirror, it could be saying affirmations, it could be working on my breath, it could be meditation, it could be lying on the floor, just lying on my back on the floor. I'm sort of breathing. zoned out of it here. You know. <laughs> ah, actually, I'm, I'm sort of zoned out of it. Zoned because out. because yeah. I'm like, why did you feel like that? Uh-huh. O- honestly, like I'm sitting here now zoned out and I know you's, I'm listening to what you're saying, but I'm zoned mm-hmm. out and I was like, what just happened there? Yeah. Honestly, though. Bit of a surreal moment. Ah, it's like, why did you feel like that looking in the mirror? Just, do you know what I mean? Oh, though? you mean that you're, you're judging yourself for having that right, experience? Like, no, no, really? not even. No. I don't, I don't know if it's a judge or it's mm-hmm. like, 
Why did you feel like that? You're back up here again then. I'm back up, you're back up here. When you've got questions, you, that's like, where you're at, yeah. Why did you feel like that and why did you do that? Why did you start showing your emotions there? Do you but know that, what I mean though? But that's, that, you know, if you're looking, are you, are you worried you want to know why for you? For better, or you worried that you show vulnerability, or, or, or a mixture I'm, I'm of like, all is, of I'm like, is my head? What's mm-hmm. going on there? Yeah, something going on with you, boy. You know, why did I? Why did I react? How I reacted there now? Yeah, I can relate to that. I would have been exceptionally self-critical and harsh. I would have judged myself and questioned, and tore apart everything I said or thought or did or didn't do. And it's, it's no way to live. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't give a shit what people be thinking about me yeah, or anything but it's about else. what you think about you yes i think that's what the biggest yeah, part is that's it that's yeah said, it's not about anybody else no. contact. like i literally couldn't give a flan about that's, yeah that's all that we're looking for is our own it, yeah. approval and our own acceptance and our own validation and our own yeah. love unconditional acceptance I've, and love without having to understand without having to to get those answers and then the answers make sense and then you can accept that that nice answer yeah. that you can tie up and put a bow around it and put it up on the shelf and, and that that's perfect it's not about waiting to understand yourself and then accepting yourself it's about that's what unconditional means there are no conditions and it's hard to wrap our logical heads around that how can you accept yourself and there be no conditions it's about accepting you as a person, you know, the same way that you would accept other people and, and all of your feelings as natural parts of, of being a human. Yeah. Different side of me now. And don't suppress it. No, definitely not. What is it? Emotions come as waves. You don't push them away, you let them roll over. There's my... The oracle. <laughs> the oracle. The oracle again. He, he's trying to he's I trying give, to get this to stick. I give the oracle. Oh, and the oracle? Mm. I like a bit of alliteration. Full of shite. <laughs> but you know what, actually, it was for us having you come here was a different vibe. It was always going to be different because, we, you know, I'd say it to you coming on, and I'm sure you probably were like, why do they want me to come up? Exactly. People get a preconceived <laughs> idea that yeah. me and Sean, and we are. Red bloody male. We we like high octane sports. We we like a lot of things that the lads like. I mm-hmm. played rugby all my life, but we wanted people. We 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 don't want pigeonholed. Mm-hmm. Um, we were open still, and we, we this is this is outside our comfort zone completely. From from we we started, it and mm-hmm. I think Sean got more anxious today. He was like, "What way are we going to do this?" And more so than any of the other ones. Mm-hmm. And it was outside our comfort zone for because us. to be honest, I don't really know anything about it. It's yeah. not something that I've experienced. Mm-hmm. So, and I was like, what do I know about this? Yeah. That's but what I coming away, like, but at the same time, I was intrigued. I was interested. Mm-hmm. And I was like... And I'm not just saying as you're here. It is. Do, do you know what I mean, though? And I, I, I was actually, in my own head, I was like, I want to go away from this, wanting to, you know, call down the road, mm-hmm. sit with you and yeah. go through a few sessions or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm now sitting now going, I'm definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I love the tissues there. Uh, I was say, <laughs> well, well, uh, for a podcast show brought to you by Kleenex. But <laughs> hey, I'm, it's, it's all right to, to that there and it's all right to have a laugh and it's all right to, to have a cry. At the same time, it's all right to have a, a laugh. But I, I've enjoyed this podcast as much as I've enjoyed the rest of them, not because it's completely on what we do, and 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 that's what I wanted. And that, when I said that to you today. He was like, he's and I was like, why are you getting more about this one? You know, worrying about this one, what we're gonna do? And I was like, this is this is where we start doing different podcasts now. Yes, we're, we're, we've been doing it a while. John was very uncomfortable at the very start. You know, mm-hmm. was not. talking and, and that <laughs> it. but I was like, this is now where we start expanding mm-hmm. and start. Showing and and bringing value. I really mm-hmm. hope that people that watch this today are and listened and they have took something from it. Mm-hmm. And if they're still listening at this point, then we're good. They have we're taken good. something from yeah. it yeah. because yeah. they might have tuned out. Well. <laughs> but I mean, that is our key thing. We wanted to bring a bit of value. We wanted to let to to bring things to make people think a wee bit. Mm-hmm. And if this only if one person is watching this. At this point, I would be disappointed. But if one person's watching this and they and they some of them resonates and it allows them to go and do something to help themselves, well then I think it was well worth it. And 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 that is that is the bottom line of it. Mm-hmm. It uh, 
Actually, I've really enjoyed it, and I think you're an amazing woman. The trials and tribulations you come through, and to have that smile and that, <laughs> that aura where you just, it's positivity. 99% of people would have broke down and says, mm-hmm. that's not for me. And a lot of the people wouldn't be here right now. But I think it's uh, an amazing testament to you. And thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, um, and just even closing out, if there was one thing that you want to close out on and say it, tell stuff and be it positive or whatever, what, what, what would you like to say to people? I suppose there are a couple of things. The first thing, and I suppose I learned this in the breakdown of my marriage, but I, it was really, really reinforced um, with the cancer journey that you don't have to do anything the way that you see other people doing things or the way that other people expect you to. You don't have to be limited by other people's limitations or even by your own. You know, you can surprise yourself. Like you were saying about the trials and tribulations and so on. I mean, for me, they haven't weakened me. They have strengthened me. So I use everything now that I go through. I harness it and I use it as fuel. I I, I grow from it. So, you know, to say that... I suppose I would love to get that across. Don't be a victim in your own life. It is your life. Make it yours. You know, get your hands on the wheel, you know, and and learn as, as you go. And I suppose I would like to say as well um, that whenever you make that connection with yourself um, and you learn to love and accept yourself, you really experience everything in a totally different way. It's like, I feel like I've got like a cushion around me. And that question, it sounds so cliche, but it's my own, my own, my own acceptance and my own love. Whereas I used to feel really vulnerable and I used to feel for years like I was too weak for this world. I thought everybody else was strong and that I was weak and that I was useless. But I've now learned life has shown me that actually, no, that belief was wrong. So I suppose if I can heal and make the positive changes I can, I can promise that anybody can do it. Yeah. You know? Brilliant. Yeah. Well, hey, Ashley, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you both. Thank you it was really lovely. It was, it was, I don't think it's the last you'll see of us. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, guys, that's us. Uh, make sure to subscribe. And if you like what you've seen, sure. And uh, get us on YouTube and all the other usual outlets. Press it up. Good luck. <laughs>